it's very therapeutic for me to be in Expo West when no one else is really there. So it's just like, I actually, spe I get there and I, you know, say hello to my neighbors, get to know, you know, the other brands that are setting up. The people around you become your best friends. So I think, you know, preparation are also training anyone that's going to work the booth so they can be a great representative of your brand, be able to, stop, to talk about the story, the product, you know, and everything. It's a vacuum of time and your job is to just maximize memorability so that when you follow up with them, they remember who you are. Welcome to the Startup CPG podcast. Since Expo West is coming up in a short few months, I wanted to share tips from some really experienced Expo veterans on how to crush it at the show for your brand. I think you'll find our guests have some really incredible strategies and also really different approaches that have worked really well for each of them. I hope you get some great tips and that everybody rocks the show. Also, be sure to check out our first ever Startup CPG dedicated section at the show. It'll be on level three of ACC and Hot Products. So if you're standing looking at the main convention hall, it's up at the top left. Hope to see you there. Enjoy. Hello, CPGers. Welcome to the Startup CPG podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Scharf, and today we have an awesome bonus episode. So we're joined by three CPG legends who are going to give you the inside track on how to crush all things Expo West. So the things you need to know to do before the show, during the show, and after the show to make the most of the investment that you're making. I am really pleased to be joined today by Matt from Chlorophyll Water, Clara from Unite Foods, and Pierre from Fishwife, each of whom I've personally seen crush Expo West. So I think they're really great people to give advice here. So guys, Let's just jump right into it. Can each of you please introduce yourselves and your brand before we get into the good stuff? Clara, maybe I could start with you. Sure. My name is Clara, the founder of Unite. We make uh, gluten-free protein bars in a world of flavors. Been exhibiting at Expo West since uh, 2022, which was the first one. We were set up in 2020, but that got canceled. Different story for a different day. Um, so we have about two expos under our belt. All right. Pierre, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, so I'm the head of sales for Fishwife. Um, Fishwife was started by uh, Becca Milstein in the heart of the pandemic in 2020 and is um, just really on a mission to really change the shape of the canned seafood set in brick and mortar retail. We make premium, delicious, ethically sourced tin seafood, and we're just getting started. Uh, DTC Native now really scaling in, in brick and mortar uh, this year. Obviously, Expo is always a fun time in order to do that. I think I'm at my ninth Expo now, uh, so almost coming on that on that decade. But yeah, just, you know, so happy to uh, to be joined by a, an amazing panel and, and, you know, happy to share some tips. It'd be nice if you got a badge or something when you hit your 10th. I feel like yeah. they should have that, like a, like a Boy <laughs> Scout, you know, 10 like Expo mark. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, oh, and I and Fishwife was just on Shark Tank, right? Yeah, last last Friday, uh, struck a deal with uh, Candice and uh, and Lori. Uh, was all hands on deck this past few days, and and yeah, it's been uh, just been amazing. All right, cool. Okay, Matt, your turn. Hey, what's going on? So uh, I am the founder of Chlorophyll Water. Chlorophyll is the first ever bottled water to pass Clean Label Project for certification made from 100% recycled plastic. It's chlorophyll, vitamin A, B12, C and D, a little organic lemon juice, natural spearmint. Um, sold nationwide at Aloe Yoga, Sprouts, Irwan, Bristol Farms, Urban Outfitters. And this will be our second Expo West, I believe, second Expo West. And our well, we've, we've done Expo East as well twice before. So we're kind of rookies. So I could definitely give some... Uh, you know, some first time knowledge, but I've been walking the show prior to exhibiting, walk the show. So just to get to know it, but um, no, super stoked to be on this panel and always help here to help out, you know, other founders. All right. I think this is a super cool panel. I've seen each of you guys just do way better than anyone would expect to in their first couple expos. So let's get everybody those tips. Um, so starting out, I think first it would be cool to just dive into, you know, right now as of recording, so it's mid-January, we've got two months until the big show. What are you guys doing now? What should people be doing now over the next two months leading up to the show? And Pierre, maybe we could start with you. Yeah, I, I would say definitely rest and, and get some sleep, you know, but that's obvious because 
Expo West is relentless. I think we all sick uh, after Expo and need a week break. So definitely I it, recharge. I, I call it conference conference crud. Like you always come back a little like out of it after. Like you might have might have a cold. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, people make fun of me because I wear a scarf starting day two, but uh, I highly recommend a scarf. So I think you know it's really important to like always do some goal setting about Expo, thinking like what you really want to get out of it and be reasonable about this, but really like be intentional in reaching out to those leads, maybe some people that have gone, you know, like dark on you, just being able to like say, hey, let's meet up in person, but don't do like the booth appointments because those never happen well, they're never on time. Maybe try to meet up for coffee. I like coffee because it's less of a commitment than a, than a dinner, but a little coffee, maybe if they're giving a presentation on a panel, you know, meet right after the panel. I love those kind of five, you know, 10 minute meetings, you know, you go straight to the point. You don't bring a big deck, just have one or two, you know, pages, samples of your product and just have a conversation. I mean, a lot of those, you know, buyers, investors, et cetera, just keep it, keep it simple. So I think, you know, preparation are also training anyone that's going to work the booth so they can be a great representative of your brand, be able to talk, to talk about the story, the product, you know, and everything. Some of the other things that in my mind are really important is, you know, preparing a 10 second pitch. Like, what is it, you know, and why should I care? Why should I stop? You know, a lot of these guys, I mean, there's so many booths. I don't even know how many booths there are. Everybody has a story. Everybody has an interesting product. So why should I care right now to quote unquote, waste five minutes with you? So I think a really impactful 10 second pitch is, is really important. And I think that's part of the preparation. That's I think, a, hey, that, I think on that note, maybe we could just do a quick round of what's everyone's Maybe not like either a 10 second pitch or if someone's walking by your booth and it's a buyer you want to talk to, what is the thing that you say about your product to grab their attention? Can we do a quick round of that? Maybe Clara, I, I know you got it this down. Do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. I feel like Matt just did a great one when he pitched it out as chlorophyll. Yeah. It was like so perfect. Um, I usually actually say, can I tell you a little bit about the brand? Because I don't want to inundate somebody and you know, kind of irritate them. So when you seek permission, that like automatically lowers their defenses. And they usually say, sure. And if they say, if they just blow you off, usually that doesn't happen. But like, you have you know. to, like, do you have to look as sweet as you look? Like, you like oh, <laughs> you yeah, of course. You can. I don't think I could pull to, that off. <laughs> you have to smile. Um, and my pitch is just like, hi, I'm Clara. You know, I'm the founder of Unite. We make globally inspired protein bars. We we saw that a big hole in the market when we want to welcome more people into wellness. And these are some of our flavors. Which one would you like to try? Pro. All right. Nailed it. Matt? Yeah. I take the approach of like, um, like help don't sell, you know? So I just, I'm helping hydrate people. So I'm just, I don't even say anything. I just kind of hand them a chlorophyll water because people are eating so much. There's so much going on and there's so many samples. I'm just handing out chlorophyll waters, you know? And then people are getting bombarded, you know? with pitches with this with that you know if someone's interested in your brand they're they're interested you know if you need to sell them too much then they're most likely you know you're wasting their time you're wasting your time so i, I just take the approach of just handing out chlorophyll waters and um just hydrating people and if they're interested they're interested yeah i kind of just take that you know help don't sell teach don't preach approach that, that's my little quick uh because there's so many people, there's so many, everyone's running around, everyone's got friends there, people are being pulled in different directions. Um, so yeah, I kind of just hand out chlorophyll waters. I love it. I, I do kind of wonder if you take the same approach to dating, if that's, <laughs> if, yeah. your, if your approach is so laid back and chill like that, I bet it works for you. But that's a question for another day. All right, Pierre, coming, coming to you. Similar to Matt, I, I, I like to welcome, um, you know, people in the world of Fishwife, you know, handing, uh, like holding a tray of beautiful, you know, samples, maybe a little piece of anchovies and a really high quality butter and a piece of cracker or, or something. Something that's really easy for them to be like, sure, like, why would I not try this, you know? And then after they have a sample, that's when I have like at least 5, 10, 20 seconds to give them more of a spiel about what they're eating you know, invite them more to come towards the booth, maybe, you know, have a seat if we're talking for more than, you know, a minute or, or two. Propose, you know, author other samples, you know, uh, saying, hey, would you like to try our collaboration with Fly by Jang? You know, do you want to try our sardines with lemon? And really 
like preach about the product and the deliciousness. I think there's so many products at Expo that don't let me taste good. So you would be surprised when you have a product that tastes good. People really love to like spend more time, you know. All so, right. And I, I think. Can, uh, oh, sorry. Can I just come oh, in for a sorry. second? Matt wants to, we all want to talk about this. Go ahead, Matt. No, it's, I think, you know, to echo that, I think it's just having like quick one liners, you know, as well. Like when someone has a quick comment about the brand, I know people come over to our booth and they're like, why should I have chlorophyll water? And my always one liner is like, well, why shouldn't you? It's like reading your horoscope. What are you looking for? You know, looking for detox, energy, antioxidants. So I think having those one liners, um, less is more. Um, I think Pierre mentioned that just, you know, a less is more, keep it simple. And what's that saying? Keep it simple, stupid, you know, like just keep everything really, really simple. Yeah. Because if, if you can't communicate your brand within the first, you know, one or two seconds, you know, how is it going to sell on the shelf? So it's like, you know, consumers that one or three seconds when a, a, a buyer is walking by your booth and stopping by your booth, if you can't communicate to them why they should be drinking it, then it goes for the same reason of why would someone purchase it in the store. So it's it's just having those, you know, quick selling points, you know, on the bottle, brand design, you know, booth design, and obviously just wear a smile too. Just be happy. You know, that's kind of like just be happy to be there while wearing comfortable shoes. So I wanted to talk actually about sample freshness. And so I think like making your samples look as fresh and appealing as possible because there's so many sample stations that are overrun. And I've heard buyers say, oh, I don't eat anything at Expo because I don't want to get sick. Like, I don't know how long it's been sitting there. I don't know what's going on. So we try to chop fresh samples every hour versus just like chopping for the whole day. Or, you know, we always want to keep our samples as fresh as possible. We could keep them in sample cups with lids so they're you know, clean. They're not just sitting out there with people talking and spitting all over them. And, you know, it's just, it's really like thinking about the cleanliness and hygiene of how you're sampling will affect if people try it or not. That's like, great. I'm a big sure. bowl where people are dipping their chip in. Like that's disgusting. Like who wants to eat that? Yes. I'm sure anybody from show standards also will appreciate you reinforcing the, the health and safety guidelines. Um, I, I love that comment because like even I, I used to work for a company that does plant-based eggs. And I went to an event once that they were sampling at and I, I didn't work there anymore, but I went up to try it and the product was cold and it's not good if it's cold. Like that's something that is supposed to be meant, you know, to eat and warm, obviously com to a completely different experience and same with drinks. Um, you know, I, Matt's, Matt has the benefit of his drink tasting great warm, but you know, most drinks that people are serving at Expo need to be ice cold. It would just blow my mind if people did not have the iced down like at the bottom of the cooler the dripping cold one to make your best first impression so i love that comment and matt also i liked what you were saying about you know just trying to navigate quick little conversations and one-liners i was just remembering one time i had a conversation with a buyer for a national natural chain who came by the booth and they're like well yeah i don't really like this and i was like oh okay but like talking to them then it turned out they actually like this was a a, a flavored energy drink and they only like water I was like, oh, wait, I've heard that about you, actually, that you only drink water. You don't drink anything with flavor. She was like, yeah, that's true. I was like, oh, OK, well, here's why this is, you know, that yeah. would appeal to a lot of people. And she completely came around on it. So I think it is important to remember that also that the buyer may actually not be the act the consumer of it, but they do know how to make those kind of decisions based off their consumers. So I, I like you bringing that up. Um, OK, Pierre, we were still going through some of your tips. Did we get to the end or do you have more to contribute? Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple more. I think, you know, uh, Daniel, you're you're going to launch some new tools also, you know, on the Startup CPG channel, which I think is going to be tremendously helpful for, for everybody. But, you know, LinkedIn, Startup CPG, Slack, community, you know, so many great resources uh, just to plan that outreach. Make it known that you're going to be there. Plan, you know, your nights, your happy hours, all the fun stuff the, that you can do outside of the show. And a lot of the retail buyers are there, you know, on that Wednesday, that first day, but also a day before sometimes taking meetings to talk about promotions. Sometimes you could talk about new items or seasonal SKUs that you're doing. So I think really take those opportunities to meet up with people, make the most out of that week. That's why, again, being fully rested is really important because you're going to be really tired after it. I love it. 
All right. Um, cool. So I totally, yes, I totally agree with that. And there is so much going on. But if you don't actually just try to plan anything, everything out ahead of time, you get there and you don't have anywhere to go. So I, uh, I like the, the prep thought. Yeah. Um, and yes, you are right about the tools we will be releasing, one of which is the Startup CPG Retail Sales Tracker in partnership with Cultivate CPG. We will be releasing that, I think, on the 25th of January. So probably by the time this is out. And it's going to be the ultimate sales resource for everyone for free, listing all the chains that you could be going after and you can use that to help you make your own little list for expo um, more to come on that all right so next clara do you want to go next with some of your pre-expo tips sure i mean i think booth planning is really important if you have it in your budget i think of expo as like my stage and i am there and it's showtime right like i am not leaving the booth unless i have to go to the bathroom i am not eating in my booth i am not having side conversations with my friends in my booth, like I am there on stage on show, right? And so I invest in having a company set up our booth for us because I want to show up on that first day rested. I don't want to worry about, did I get build the booth on time? Did I get all the samples there? Did I get all these things there? So if you have it in your budget to invest in somebody to set up and dismantle your booth, it's the best money to me that I can spend. Because How much is I it? It's not as expensive as you, it depends on like, obviously how complex your booth is. Um, but, you know, it's probably between $1,500 and $2,500, depending on how complex your booth is. And for me, it's a setup and dismantle. Like, that's a great deal, <laughs> right? And yeah. So, Considering the value of your time. The yeah. value of your time and just how refreshed you're going to be and how energetic are you on that day one when that show starts. Um, so I think that's a bit, planning for your samples is another one. Like freshness is really important. Um, you want the like, you know, product that was just produced. You want product that tastes really good. If you can tease a new product or if you have something interesting coming up, but the expo is a great time to test looking for show trends, for something new, something innovative. So it's a good time to debut something if you have it. So be thinking about that. It might be a little bit late to already do something new, but maybe holding off, like not launching something until expo and making that the debut. So you have a, a thought starter or a talk, talking point. Now that we've exhibited a few times, you know, we always want to have something fresh to show a new buyer. And then starting to also plan out like the New Hope does a great job in education events. So. So like before I was in this space, year before, and I just did the education before the show. And so got to, you know, went to their business school and learned and started networking a year in advance. So if you're not ready to exhibit this year, look up the education events and maybe attend those. And I think my best thing that I ever did was I volunteered in an expo booth, actually a couple of them the year before I exhibited. And that gave me a real test and taste for what actually happened. I had been to a million expos before in the hardware industry. Let me tell you, totally different in food. It's literally a figuratively Disneyland. So you kind of get a taste for how, what kind of buyers are there. What does the interaction feel like, look like? And so it's it's a good learning opportunity. I really appreciated that. And like everybody else said, um, show up refreshed. And yeah. put your phone away. Like, don't look at your phone in your booth. I can't stress how that enough. Like, I walk down Expo and I see people like this and they're answering emails. We're doing God knows what. But it's like, you paid... Think about how much money you spent to be standing right there. Like, don't look at your phone. Look at your phone at like a scheduled interval. Answer emails at a scheduled interval. Maybe when your booth slows down, but you're on stage. You're, you know, you, and it's your job to like in, engage with everybody that comes into your booth. And I also have like decoys in my booth. So if like a salesperson is coming to pitch me something, I have a person I can pass them along to and say, could you please talk to my, to my marketing person? Or could you please talk to this person? And so that, you know, you can guide those people so that you're not interrupted. And then treating everybody with dignity, I think is really important. I think so many people are badge hunting and looking for just a color badge, but you might miss a huge opportunity um, if you're being really short-sighted and just talk to everybody like a human and your job your number one job is to get as many samples in people's mouths as possible because that person might not be a buyer for your category, but they might be best friends with that buyer. Or they might just be a consumer themselves who falls in love with your brand and becomes a super user. Like, you know, everybody can consume all of these brands. I, I love it. And um, controversial question for you here, Clara. Are you a behind the table or in front of the table kind of person oh, at Expo? God. Are you back there waiting for them to come to you or are you out there fishing the stream? No, I'm fishing. I get told to please stand back in my booth more than a few times every episode. <laughs> I've um, never heard that. Is that true? Do they do oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're like, you can't stand <laughs> out. 
and pass out samples. And it's like, you know, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. But, you know, if it's slower time, I'm standing out there with a tray being like, hey, you want to try a churro flavored protein bar? I know you do. Come on over. Like, you know, and just I, I'm just like hawking it, like selling it because this that would is work on company. me. Yeah. And if all else fails, I'll put on our churro mascot uniform and that will definitely stop people. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, that's great. And I know, I mean, you know, just speaking of like, you know, from outside of the booth also and, you know, fi- like, you know, finding people at panels and stuff. I, I know you personally have gotten accounts. I think we were on a panel um, last year with Mitch from Earth Fair and then you got to meet him there. And I think then they started carrying your product. So. I mean, definitely a lot of stuff going on at Expo if you just research it ahead of time and figure out where people are going to be and just put that on your own agenda. Um, make sure you get to the places you need to go. And there, yeah, there are retailers who will hold sessions and, you know, maybe you don't go, but you can send somebody from your team just to make sure to go over there, get their business card, ask a question. Um, perfect. All right, Matt, coming to you. So I think we're still on pre-Expo stuff, but I know it's all blending together, which is great. So, yeah, no, I think even before you exhibit at the show, attend it. You know, that's, you know, any show you, any trade show you do, I think it's important to walk the show, to know where you want to be, to understand what everyone else is doing, get some, you know, booth design, information, intel. So I think before you even exhibit, you know, walk the show, bring samples, bring a bag of samples. New Hope's not going to want to hear this, but yeah, my first year, you know, year or two before I got a booth, I just packed my book bag, you know, carrying around water, super heavy, but I was, you know, just handed, handing it out to people, you know, and, and just, you know, networking and kind of, um, getting the lay of the land because, you know, Expo West is so big that your location, your hall, where you, where you're situated means so much. It, it is really important. So I definitely recommend attending the show before you exhibit. And that's not with that. That's not only with Expo West or it's with every trade show. Just attend. The other thing too is, you know, when you're applying for shows or after you get the show, you could apply for grants. So that's another thing too is that, you know, chlor- with chlorophyll water, we've, you know, actually ex- this Expo West, we applied for a grant and we got it. You know, there's so many state programs and so many programs that you could apply to and you could actually get your trade shows paid for. Um, so that's just another little tidbit. I will definitely, if you know, look out for those as well. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I prepare to bring a lot of samples. If you have the opportunity to bring full samples, you know, I think that's always great because, you know, this way, while your booth, while you're stationary in your booth, your products walking around the entire show. So my goal, every expo is for everyone to be drinking green water. You know, just, I want everyone, I want people in, in other booths. I want buyers. I want water everywhere. So I, I plan to bring a few pallets each and expo, each and every expo east and west, just to kind of you know, go through the inventory, you know, at the trade show and have everyone drinking it, nothing left over, you know, setting up appointments. I know, as you know, Pierre mentioned is super, is super tough. So it's just, you know, knowing the familiar faces, reaching out to people before the show, Hey, we're exhibiting, Hey, we'll be there posting on LinkedIn saying that you're going to be exhibiting, just letting people know that you're, you're going to be at the trade show and you're going to be, you're going to be there. And then, um, as far as a lot of prep that we're doing, and we just keep the booth really simple. I actually like setting up the booth, you know, different than it's very therapeutic for me to be in Expo West when no one else is really there. So it's just like, I actually, spe- I get there and I, you know, say hello to my neighbors, get to know, you know, the other brands that are setting up and um, the people around you become your best friends, you know, for those, you know, three, four days and, and you bounce ideas off of them. You're bouncing buyers off of them. You're just really getting to know them. I mean, Daniel, there's so many times, you know, we would crisscross buyers you know, introduce people here and there. I would even walk, I think you're around the corner, but walk, you know, walk brands, uh, walk retailers over to you. So I think it's always important. Get to know your neighbors, become close with them. And and uh, yeah, and, and there's neighbors that, you know, we kind of look for each and every year, you know, that we've become close with, that we've just worked well together. So that's kind of a, some quick little tidbits there. Yeah. And, and just, I would just say samples, have enough samples. You're spending a lot of money to be in, to be in that trade show. And, and don't leave early. I never really understood that, like, just if I'm paying all this money, like I'm le- I'm staying until the final second. You know, I'm not leaving until like I'm literally the last first person there in the morning, last person to leave. You know, I really never understood, a, you know, brands that, you know, uh, pack up shop before it's over. Just get your money's worth. Um, so that's kind of, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm always the last person there. Yeah, I like I like all of those points. 
And just to add on a few things, um, so Clara had mentioned about like kind of freeing yourself up, or I think you said having a decoy in the booth. But one thing that I I, I totally agree with is it's not going to be a great use of your energy to just if you're the salesperson, let's say, or you're the founder in charge of sales to be the one pouring every sample and pitching every single person who comes by. I mean, it just, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of breath and a lot of talking to do it all. Um, and, you know, if you don't have a scarf handy, by the way, Pierre, when you were describing that, like if a nice looking man with a scarf offered me this lovely charcuterie board, I would be instantly like transported into this gourmet world. And I wouldn't, I mean, it just it sounds like you got it dialed in. But if you're <laughs> if you like, yeah, if you just spend all your time just like pitching to every single person and every service provider comes by, you won't have it left for you when the big buyer comes by. Right. So I, I really appreciate that. And actually on our startup CPG Slack, we do do a little bit of matching with people who want to volunteer at booths um, like Clara was mentioning with brands who would like to have a little help. So I think it's great if you go on there and maybe find somebody who can volunteer for a day. As a brand, you, I, think you, I think you get seven total badges, so you should probably have a little bit um, to spare. And then it, it makes all the difference. I had at Expo East a Wharton student each day, and they were phenomenal. And then I was just you know out there with my eyes going, looking for the right badges. Um, but And then, Matt, also the experience, I think it, it super helps. Like my first year at Expo, I would say, like I didn't even really know who the retailers were and had to have help for people to kind of clue me in. The second year I knew the retailers, but not necessarily who the buyers were. My third expo, like I know who I'm looking for. I can recognize them down the aisle and they're not getting by me. Um, so I, I like all of those comments. And then also like coming with a list, you know, okay, you maybe even know who your retailers are, but I go into every show with here are the 15 people that I'm absolutely looking for. I've tried to contact all of them and with my nice little like graphic that I've made and like come here please like you know come say hi and they'd be like oh yeah I will but then they forget and they'll walk right by your booth without noticing it so I always hit them last minute like looking forward to seeing you today and you know something personalized or texting them if you have their number or whatever just to give them that last second like hey don't forget um, cause you know, there's nothing worse than missing the key buyer that you need to see there in person to get something going. Yeah. And, and I think, I think the kind of, I think when designing the booth too and planning your booth, you don't spend a lot of money. I think our, our egos tell us, you know, we want this beautiful booth. We want to represent the brand, but really our brand speaks for our brand, you know? So, so I think as you're starting off trade shows, especially in the beginning, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you know, not have, you know, enough one sheeters, not have this, that. So I just think, you know, get through it, keep the booth really simple, keep the design simple. And it's only three days, you know, it's, it's three days. You don't need an elaborate setup. You just need your brand to really speak for itself and, and really just have the key communication points that you want to get across. So that's, that's with having one sheeters, you know, I think one, having really informative one sheeters that retailers could take with them, I think is super important, you know, plan those out, get, get those printed and then, and any other swag, people love swag. So I think, you know, besides having your, your samples, I think maybe, you know, we have stickers, you know, that and now if you put their stickers on there, I like to invest in the things that will help market the brand, you know, and that's, you know, stickers or that's kind of hats or things that people will actually wear, use and be walking billboard billboards for, for our brand. So, you know, like just I would say you don't need to spend a lot of money in the beginning, you know, less is more, you know, gain the experience of the trade show um, and kind of go from there, you know, really bootstrap it in the beginning. And just, there's a lot of ways to get really creative with how you build out your booth. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. I mean, there are definitely different ways to do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably more in your camp, Matt, of like, I, like, I'm not really such an interest, like, I'm, I'm, I don't care so much about marketing and just me personally, I'm more of a sales guy. So I'm like, the booth is what it is. I honestly don't care what the booth is because I'm not even going to be in it. I'm going to be in the aisle as much as I can, just hunting people down. Like I would just take like a demo table if I could and have the product and I'm good. Like I'm going to make it happen. But then there are people like Clara's booth always looks amazing. And then I remember like, okay, Wild Wonder always does something like really elaborate and it's beautiful and it's an experience and it's cool. And like me as more of a sales oriented person, I'd be like, don't spend the money on that. Like save my, save our budget for something else. But it can be really impactful, you know, and they, oh, Wild Wonder did these gorgeous, it was like a tote bag, but it was like shiny and cool and everyone was desperate to have one. So 
Like, I think if you're going to make the investment, make sure it's going to pay, pay off that way. I, I think the most important thing is to have an inviting booth. So that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. It's We've all had the experience of walking into a boutique and feeling like we don't belong there because nobody wants to help us or talk to us and makes us feel awkward. And you're just like, okay, I'm just going to leave. And then we're like, right? So if you have that, we've all had that experience as a consumer. You want to be somewhere in the middle. You want to be friendly. You want to be inviting. You want to have a smile, but you don't want to like inundate people with everything. And your booth can draw them in if it's interesting or if it's colorful or if there's something going on. Um, but we actually did not spend a lot of money in our booth and we've used it for three years in a row. So it can be done in a cost efficient, effective way. But I think it's the personalities of the people in booth design. Because if you have a bunch of people in there that just look like, don't bother me. Or if you have a bunch of people in there that look like they've had too many energy drinks, like they're both problematic. How, how did you actually design your booth? Like, did you come up with what you wanted the layout to be? Or did you hire somebody and they just kind of took care of the whole thing? It was a part of like our, our branding package. So when we did all of our branding, the, the the person that we worked with, they designed our trade show booths too. And it's just, it's basically just a graphic, a little podium, and that's about it, you know, and then flooring. So there's nothing really exciting, you know, too, too complicated about our booth. Yeah, it can just be as simple as you have a backdrop and then you have maybe a table runner or something like that. And then I love featuring the product. And I think Matt does this better than almost anybody is like, there's not a lot going on in his booth other than a ton of beautiful green water that is very, you know, product focus centric, like keeps you thinking about the product. And then I also um, think one thing Matt does really well is he'll have like a mini pull up banner with just some super impactful data on there. Like, you know, top rated Nielsen growth brand, stuff like that. That's just like, immediately I can look at it and be like, oh, this is a hot brand. I get it. Um, so I, I love seeing that stuff. Um, okay. And then, um, so let's say moving on to kind of like at the show, I know we've talked about it a little bit, but you know, any other tips for people as they're sitting there in their booth or preferably standing out in front of their booth or at least making sure no one's going to pass them by. Um, you know, what are some additional tips that you would give to people? And, you know, one that I'll throw in is just the distributors it can be equally important as buyers. You are trained to go like, you know, green beans, go get those green badges. Um, but, you know, I think the distributors in some cases actually can be more important than meeting the buyer because some buyers just will pass everything through the distributor. And so, you know, for me, I'm always, if there's a distributor coming by, I'm always saying hello, especially, you know, UNFI, KE, we all know, and then just saying, oh, which account do you work with? And then so many times I've just been overjoyed because it's the account that I've been trying to get in touch with. And if you make them a fan of your product, the buyer is going to end up trying your product. Um, any, any other ones from you guys? I don't know, Matt, do you want to go first? You know, it's treating everyone equally at the show. You know, you never know who's going to come by your booth and you never know whether they're a distributor or whether they're a, a retailer with a different type of badge. You know, you just don't, you don't know. So the, the goal is to, this is not necessarily, you know, a show where you're going to, you're going to actually write orders, you know, so you're not going into this where you don't have, you're not going to get a purchase order right there. You're not going to have. Um, this is a follow-up show. This is, this is a hello. This is a meet and greet, so to speak. So I think it's just, you just want to meet as many people as possible. You know, you just want to give out as many samples as possible and, and get people to try your product. So I think it's just, if you, if you're an introvert, this is your three days to be an extrovert, you know, and just, and just, you know, smile and just give out product. And, and really this is also a lot of, we live in such a digital age right now where we don't even meet some of the retailers or the buyers or the UNFI, KE reps, you know, in person a year after until you actually, they actually take the product in. So it's, you know, this is kind of, you know, a hello and a meet and greet. So it, it's, it's a networking, it's a networking event just as much as it is a trade show. So I think it's, you treat it like a networking event, have business cards, have a lot of business cards. Cause usually those scanner things don't really work too well. You know, those, uh, the LinkedIn scanner, stuff. Um, so have as many business cards as possible. Give out, I give out a business card with every, I don't let people leave my booth with just taking a sample. They have to take a one sheeter and they have to take a business card. It's all coupled together. If they throw out the business card, they throw out the one sheeter. I don't really, it doesn't matter. You know, if nine out of people throw it out, one could be a great distributor. One could be a great buyer, uh, a retail account. So 
I would say give out business cards, give out one sheeters with your samples and collect as many business cards as possible. So you could do your follow up, not right after, wait a couple of weeks, you know, but uh, to do that follow up. But um, yeah, I think just just network, you know, just network, smile. And I think just we, we all said it, give out as many samples as possible. Yeah, I like that. I like the idea also of just making sure you push yourself out of your comfort zone. Like if you're an extrovert, an introvert, become an extrovert. I I, I remember any instance at a trade show where I just kind of let a buyer go and because I felt like just not comfortable really putting myself out there or like, you know, just kind of jumping in and be like, hey, like I really need to talk to you. I think there are nice ways that you can do it though. I mean, one, I for sure have like a seen a buyer walk by and miss them. And I've run back down the other aisle across so that I could then just by chance run into them coming like, oh, hey, like every show I've done that a bunch of times and had product with me like, oh, cool, actually just running back to my booth. Like, do, can you come by and try a sample? Um, so sorry if you're a buyer listening to this and um, you did not know that I did that, but probably yeah, I'm not yeah. such a good actor anyways. And you knew about it. And um, secondly, I think also going back to Clara, what you were saying before about kind of like asking permission a little bit. I found that to work for me sometimes where, you know, if I mean, number one, if I meet a buyer, they're not the right buyer. or I see them coming by and I don't know who the right buyer is for that account. I would always say something like, could I ask you is the right buyer? Or, or can I ask you who is the buyer for the category? Are they here at the show? A hundred percent of the time, people would answer me if I asked it that way. Um, and then they would also respond really well if I said like, hey, can I just introduce myself? I just wanted to say hello. And like, usually they'll say yes to something like that. Like going back to what you were saying about like, can I just tell you about my brand a little bit? It's, I think like if you're in an uncomfortable situation, kind of approaching it that way for me worked pretty well instead of just being like, hey, here's my product, please. Can you, can I tell you all about it? Like, so that out of just sharing that tip in case it helps. Um, I think and, just okay. On that, just to harp on that, if you're over pitching, I think it, it, like if you're over pitching, it's not going to work. You know, it's it's if the brand, I mean, the the retailers know what they want. You know, and the other thing too is that at trade shows like this, you can't get discouraged by people coming to your booth and trying to sell you things. You know, which it, it happens. It realistically happens a lot. Ingredient suppliers, packaging suppliers, logistics companies, um, and be prepared. Once you do sign up for Expo, you're on mailing list. So you're going to get random phone calls all the time from logistics companies, but don't, be, <laughs> don't, don't be discouraged if you're getting pissed a lot of things. Just, you got to just, you know, give out samples, you know, cause you want people, I know I said it a lot, but you want everybody walking around with your product because, because then, you know, that's your biggest advertising, you know, that's your biggest marketing. I like the diversity of styles that we have here, which I mean, for you guys, because you've all been extremely successful. So I think it's good for people to kind of like listen to the different approaches and then figure out what's the right one for them and their product. Like Matt, you're, you've had an explosive growth and you're very like chill and confident in your product and kind of let stuff come to you and also have your business cards out. I'm like, I would say more high energy, high anxiety also about trade shows. And I, but I also at the same time learned to stop putting my business card out because I don't want to be on those lists, but I, you know, I would just like hand it to the buyer if they're actually there. Um, so what about, what about you, uh, Pierre, where do you fall on the spectrum of, of those things? Oh, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. I, I'm probably closer to, to Clara. I'm definitely like in the aisle, you know, trying to start a conversation, but it's, it's really around food. You know, I want people to like have a really nice time, a healthy bite of protein, you know, something that's super delicious. Um, you know, and then I want to casually like have a quick exchange, you know, rapid fire questions, you know, I'm also there to ask questions. You know, I think that's, that's still a lot of the misunderstanding, you know, stop pitching so hard at a retailer or whoever ask questions you know and and you can find out that that may not be your buyer but that buyer is walking you know one aisle away so definitely ask questions focus on the product focus on the story and that's kind of my my approach uh, i would say it's a little bit more you know thoughtful and, and methodical that you're not passing by my booth without you know me having the opportunity to have a conversation with you and and you're getting a sample and by the way they say I don't like fish. Totally fine. I'm still going to say, well, you know, you should definitely try this one and maybe you can yell at me if you don't like it, you know, but be a little pushy, but not, not too much. Anything, any Clara, anything you want to add on all of those great thoughts? Well, I think, you know, you will find people that don't like your product. It's fine. 
like, don't let it discourage you. You know, you will find people who'll be like, mm, I don't just don't like this. And you just smile and say, well, thank you for trying, right? Like, don't let it discourage you. That's just normal human behavior, right? You're not going to please everybody. Um, and then going back a couple conversations ago, we were talking about like, this is, you know, you're not there to close the business that day. So that I think makes you seem desperate. You're there to like get invited to the line review. You're there to get invited for a next conversation. They haven't asked you to the dance yet. Like we've had, and and conversely, like we've had retailers give us yeses on the trade show floor. And then like that actually never went anywhere. Right. And so it's just, it's a vacuum of time. And your job is to just maximize memorability so that when you follow up with them, they remember who you are. I love it. I was just remembering like the most ridiculous interaction I had somebody with somebody at Expo East was a sales guy came up to my booth when I was the CEO of this company and he was wearing a green badge. So I was in my green badge mode, you know, pitching and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not really with this company. I just used this to get in to the show. I'm actually, uh, you know, a VP of sales. So let me ask you, you know, how many salespeople do you have? Like, oh, you know, these are some salespeople that I have here. And he just looked at me and he goes, Oh, that's funny. I would have expected you to be much further along, you know, with a salesperson or two in the market. And meanwhile, like, you know, we thought we were crushing it. And like, you know, I think most people would have agreed that we had incredible growth and we're doing absolutely well. And I just looked at him and I was like, what's happening right now, dude? Like, why, what are you, why are you, is this? and he was like, yes, yeah, so I'm available. You know, if you, if you want to, you know, switch things up and, you know, really get to the next level. And I was just like, how, like, what is this kind of an approach? And so I basically just gave him my like, get out of here, dude, kind of look and walked away. And then like two days after the show, this dude hits me up on LinkedIn and he says, Hey, I met your like head of sales at the show. Sounds like he doesn't know what he's doing. Let me know if you want a change of leadership. I'm oh like, my God. man, that was me. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I was wrong with you, dude. Oh, I was so tempted to blast that out there. But fortunately, I was in a better mood than that. But <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like, my face is like still red thinking about there it. There are crazy people. Like, I've had people, oh, you're going to be out of business by next year. I go, okay, crazy person. Like, thank you. You know, they're just, I think they're just very agonizing. And the, the funny thing is, too, when sometimes people will come to your booth and they like tell, yeah, they tell you how you should be doing business and, oh, maybe you should add this ingredient. You should do that ingredient. And then by the third day, I'm like, well, you should start your own. And you're like, as well, like by, by day three, I'm, you know, but uh, no, you just kind of just be charismatic, like just have a have a personality and just just smile and just take it all in because there is a cast of characters at trade shows. I mean, it's just par for the course. But um, you're there because you believe in your product, you believe in your brand, and, you know, confidence is key, you know? So that's the other thing, too. When talking with, you know, everyone that comes by your booth, just be, be confident, you know? You know your brand better than anyone else. You know the data, you know the sales, you know the analytics. Have those key 10-second pitch of why someone should take in your brand, you know? And the other retailers, a lot of times, too, is that nobody wants to be the first retailer to take in your product. You know, people want to see quote unquote, like proven sales or, or where are you? So if you have any material where you could communicate, you're in this store, that store, you know, um, Daniel mentioned, yeah, we've got great, basically POS, you know, great banners that, you know, have quotes from, you know, the Vogue's, the Vanity Fairs. And then we've got a tabletop that has our Nielsen score with the retailers that carry us and quotes from retailers and, but, but really clean, really simple, not, not a lot of information, just the right information. You know, so so I think that's really important. Just the show is massive. You know, the show is really big. So you people are walking quick. So you literally have, you know, a few seconds to to really engage that, you know, that retailer. But confidence is key. Just be confident. You know, you believe in your brand, you're investing into it by being there, you're investing your time, you're investing your dollars. So yeah, be patient and don't be discouraged. You know, don't be discouraged if things if your traffic's not there the first day. The, the show works in very, uh, you know, North Hall, be crazy the first day, then everyone goes to the other halls, then North Hall is slow, and then the last day North Hall is back. So it's kind of have fun with it, enjoy it. You know, trade shows are, are um, it's kind of like a, you're working, but it's a, it's a party of everyone in your business, you know, and you, you really want to see everyone do well, everyone succeed and, and, and just kind of meet new people. I would say protect your energy too. So if your booth neighbor is like really Debbie Downer, like don't spend time with them. 
like, you know, don't get sucked into their energy. Oh, have you seen any buyers? We haven't seen any buyers. I'm like, oh, really? We've seen this person, not for this person, right? Like, it's your energy that's sucking the uh, the room down. So I think that's important. I see people like sitting there, you know, bickering or it's just, it's really weird to me. Like if you're going to have negative energy at the booth. Oh yeah. And and it's, I think you spoke about it. They give you like fake tickets. If you do like, if you stand out or if you're something's too high or if you're, your table's out a little. So just, you know, just if they come by your booth and tell you to get back in or to, to move your table back or, you know, do it and just re- like you said, protecting your energy, protect your booth, you know, because, yeah, sometimes I had my first year, I had a neighbor that had a huge sign which covered all my product and, and it was like eight feet tall and you're only allowed things that I think are fall four feet. So it's just really letting your neighbors know you're all there for the same thing where not you're all there for you know, to bring in business, to meet new people, just um. Yeah, I think protecting your energy is a great, great point. Yes, I, I love all of those comments. And I would go nuts if somebody did that to me with a sign for sure. But at the same time, if I go to like a distributor show, if I can shuffle my table out a little bit further into the aisle to try to stand out, I will. Um, so, you know, you got everyone, you got to look out for yourself, but also be, be fair to everybody. And yeah, people can help you so much. I mean, I, Matt, you've helped me out just tons of times. And I've always tried to help you, you out. I mean, you have great product and yeah i mean just there's so much that you can get done by working together um, and then one of my favorite kind of advanced maneuvers also that i'll share is uh, the buyer like kind of pick and roll where like if you ever been in an aisle and the buyer's coming down the opposite side and it doesn't look like they're gonna come to your side or you don't know and you can't miss that buyer i run a like a two-person play i'm like okay so can you need to go and stand opposite us in that aisle and just make yourself big like put your elbows out so that the buyer has to kind of bounce off you and come closer to our booth as they pass pass and then i'm there right in front of them like hey oh hi like i've got a sample for you how are you um so and I, i've seen other people pull that pretty well like kind of use the physical space to push people one way or another i also even just walking the show like without a booth have like just you know instead of kind of like walking the whole show where if someone's walking in front of you you'll never cross paths with paths with them have just stood in one place maybe with like another salesperson or something and just basically everyone's going to come down the aisle at some point you can kind of just stand there and matt i know you do this at shows maybe where you um haven't actually exhibited but just kind of like hang in one place and then the whole stream will come by you at some point right like you're going to see potentially be way more efficient than walking yeah i actually just throw chlorophyll water at people and uh, I just throw bottles of water. No, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. No, but if, if you if you see someone at the trade show and they don't stop by your booth, it's actually a great segue to follow up with them two weeks later. Hey, so you at trade show. We were super swapped. And then you could send samples to it. So, you know, expos, trade shows are not the only place to do business. It's a great way to email people after the show, even if they didn't come by your booth and say, hey, must have missed you at, at expo. I'd love to send you samples. You know, so I think the follow up is key. But yeah, it, I definitely set up you know, uh, set up situations at trade shows I'm not really at, just like my laptop and a couple samples and just kind of just, it's a great way before you have a booth. I think it's an, I think it's really, really important to walk the show, you know, walk the show, understand it and, and really get a lay of the land. All right. So just rounding off here, let's say last question, which is so post show, I heard interestingly from Matt, it sounds like you actually wait a couple of weeks to follow up with people. Um, me, I'm like, you know, fighting myself off from emailing the first day. So you probably like leaving the show. I'm on the airplane setting my send later emails to go maybe like, I don't know, two, three days after the show where I want to like, I don't know. I always just felt like I want to keep the momentum, but for sure I got scolded a couple times by buyers being like, I like, don't talk to me right now. I'm <laughs> drowning in email. How about, how about everybody else? What are, what are some tips? Maybe Pierre, I'll start with you for the post show follow up. Yeah, I I think it goes back to like how your interactions, you know, go and and I think being clear on next steps. You know, am I sending you samples? Uh, is it a cat review? Am I requesting a meeting? Should I connect with your distributor? You know, et cetera. Um, and, and that's what you're going to include in an email. And, and that way the buyer is going to remember, you know, the conversation he had with you. But also, you know, back to Clara's point, like the memorability of, of the booth is going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember them. I remember them for the swag. I remember them for the T-shirt, for the food, for 
whatever it is, you know, find something that's really unique and, and ownable that's going to help you. And maybe allude to it. Is that a picture, you know, in the attachment of your booth or something? I think it's also in that note taking. Um, you can staple that business card or something. Take that note down right away. You know, you can always say to someone, hey, I just need five seconds. I'm just going to write this down and I'm right, you know, with you. Also back to, sorry, quick, quick sidebar, uh, back to when you're in at the booth, be quick at pivoting. If you're not the right person, if they're talking about ingredients and I'm sales, well, you know, pivot them to your ops person or like a, to a decoy business card of the ops manager, HR manager, quality, whatever, because like, again, you need to use your time wisely. Also know when you're supposed to pull your founder, you know, CEO on a, to a conversation, but also don't, you know, a lot of people are going to want to talk to your founder and CEO. So like try to save the energy for the right conversation. Uh, and again, be quick at like utilizing them well. So I think, again, it goes back to like the note taking, you know, being methodical about, you know, next steps, not only might be sending samples in the wild, you know, but, but again, uh, you send samples because you have that conversation. Um, I like, I agree. Like 10 days, two weeks is good. Unless, you know, they said, oh, follow up in May. And I've had that happen before. They were like, I don't want to hear from you for two months. This is when I'm doing my review. This is great. You know, then all the ones that I, that I have is also with the samples, you can send a handwritten note. You can find again, something that will make you different. Because imagine, I mean, they're going to see 4,000 brands. They're going to have hundreds of samples going to their office the weeks after it. So even if they remember you, it's like, it's so much, you know, try to be on top of the pile as far as like being thoughtful, being caring, being mindful of, of their time and, and really thankful of them taking the time. So I think it's kind of all, um, all those things. One thing that we didn't mention is you know, and, and Matt, you said it, like, be early and don't leave early. I had a buyer, like, a couple of years ago, carry measure of Whole Foods, at my booth on a Saturday, 45 minutes before the show opened. I don't know how she got in, but she was there. Um, so you never know. And we spent pretty much an hour, you know, talking. I also had, at 5 p.m. in the basement at all eat. I had director, VP, SVP, and CEO of Whole Foods at my booth. Everybody around me was gone. No one there. And we spent like, you know, five, 10 minutes talking, exchanging samples, et cetera. Obviously, they were hiding their badge and everything. But like, again, it speaks to like, don't actually just go badge hunting. But, you know, you never know who that can be. It can be an investor. It can be someone using a, you know, exhibitor badge. And you could be like, oh, you're an exhibitor. I don't have time for you. You know, well, big mistake. You never, never know. Uh, and also it, it, it speaks badly about your brand. You know, everybody is a consumer. Everybody is going to buy products. Everybody talks. Small world. So, you know, people will ask, like buyers will ask, will be like, oh, is there a brand that you've seen that I should check out? You know, so be memorable in, in, in your sort of network. I love it. All right. Claire, how about you? I think one tip that we haven't talked about is also leaning on your brokers to like f both to bring people and bring customers to your booth, your, your, any broker that you have, be, be clear with them who you want them to bring to their booth, to your booth and have them walk them over if they have meetings with them. Um, having a list and clear direction for your brokers is really important. Um, and also uh, relying on them also for some of the follow up. Here's all the people we met you know, here's what they were interested in because sometimes they have a better relationship with the retailer where they're, they already have scheduled meetings with them and they can, you know, say, Hey, Clara met you, you know, you tried this product, blah, blah, blah. I'm still going to follow up too, but also relying on the brokers for a secondary touch point, a, a different person talking about your brand. Um, and I like to send a picture of my booth, me standing in my booth usually, and I have my broker's put that in their emails so that it's memorable and they can remember of the 7,000 brands that were expo, which one was Unite. I love it. And yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, you can look at your brokers almost as just another person you need to sell to at the show. I know I, I in general did not have great luck with my broker just like, hey, can you bring buyers by the booth? Like they almost never did that. But if it was a specific account, like, hey, 
I know you're going to be at the show. I need you to bring the buyer to our booth at some point about this specific account. That usually would work. And we'd be playing like spy games. I'm like, do you have eyes on the buyer? Like, which aisle are you in? <laughs> and like, yes, they're, I'm tracking their aisle too. I'm going to make sure they come by your booth and then we'll rendezvous over. Like, okay, that's a, <laughs> definitely something that I would run. And um, yeah, Pierre, do you want to say something? We need air tags. I've been thinking about it like every ah, past ah, expo. Ah. And I'm almost like, you know, I almost want to do it. Um, Cause I'm sure that's you know, illegal. sometimes <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. You know, that's why I'm saying I'm almost want, I almost want to do it, you know, but, um, but Hey, I would pay help, for that feed. You know? if somebody would RFID <laughs> tag all the buyers, I would pay for the feed and just see like, like that map in Harry Potter, like where you can see them moving around the castle. You know, I would, yeah, I would, I'd pay a certain amount of money for that. I've heard someone tried that at some show. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe that'll be our next business together, guys. Um, cool. Matt, do you want to add any thoughts? Yeah, I think wear something with pockets. You know, what I do yeah. is I collect, I collect so many business cards. I have one pocket follow up and, you know, follow up with these people. And then another pocket, you know, I just took your business card because I want to support you and, 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 you know, show some love. And then, yeah, I like to follow up a week or two after, keep it simple, just wanted to check in, you know, send you my contact information. Because realistically, the retailers know if they want to take in your products. You know, I know, Daniel, you touched on it earlier. It's like, let it's, it's a calculated chill approach, I guess we have. If you're pitching too much, the retailer might take it in. They might ask for a BOGO. They might ask for a free fill. They might ask for these things. And then you're getting thrown in a location you're not excited about. If... A retailer is excited about your brand, you know right away. And then they, once they're excited about your brand, you're getting merchandise in a great location and you, you're setting yourself up for success. So I think, you know, post trade show, if something's not working, you know, if you're not hearing back, don't push too hard. You know, it, the right time, the right retailers will come along. Yeah, just, just don't oversell, don't over pitch, you know, post, you know, after the trade show. Because everything works out. What's meant to be is meant to be. And, you know, the retailers that, really love your brand will will help support you and want to see you do well and from these trade shows you build you know long lasting friendships and relationships from these trade shows i've met so many people that now i call friends you know and i'm new to this industry you know i was never in this industry before i felt like an outsider still kind of feel do feel like an outsider but these trade shows are when you know you meet people that become your friends and make you feel part of this industry yeah i guess one other tip I was going to add in about business cards is for me, I actually almost never ask a buyer for their card because I feel like they only bring so many and or oftentimes they don't even have one. But I almost never had an issue if I said, oh, can I write down your email? And they would just tell it to me and I would just type it into my phone right then and make my note about following up with something like the point that Pierre was making. Um, I always I've, I've seen people be like, hey, do you have a business card? And they're like, oh, OK, yeah, let me like try to fish one out of my wallet or something. But like, yeah, I mean, I, I was always super happy just to get their email address or asking a different buyer, like, can you give me the right buyer's email address? Something like that, like just pretty much always worked. So um, this has been a cornucopia or plethora of incredible. I hope everybody listening is just taking notes down. And then I was just going to pass around to each of you guys for, you know, if you had a last thought or and or way for people to follow up with your guys' brands and kind of stay tuned with you in the future if you have a preferred um, channel for that, Matt. Yeah, I think just one thing to add is, you know, when you're exhibiting, just don't eat too much. Don't eat all the samples yourself. Don't don't go around having because there's so much different types of food that, you know, you could get caught up. You're at your bring a, you know, wake up early, have a proper breakfast, you know, have proper food, a meal before you start your trade show and then book these trade shows, get all their dinners. The, the restaurants get booked up pretty quickly. So make your reservations kind of in advance you know, right after the show, um, because you're going to be hungry around that, you know, six o'clock, seven, six thirty time frame. So that's just a little pointer there. Um, but yeah, you can find us uh, at Chlorophyll Water on all social media, chlorophyllwater.com. I forgot our booth number, but we will be at Expo West. We will be in the hot products. So, you know, feel free to visit us there. You don't need to make an appointment. You could just swing by. Yeah, no, th this was awesome. As always, really appreciate, you know, what Startup CBG does and Daniel for including us. So, so thank you. Absolutely. And I, and that actually was one of the things about having a volunteer to help out is you can send them out for a proper lunch. I totally agree with you on having an actual meal, especially if you're there for a couple of days to, to keep your team going. Um, okay, Clara, 
Any final points and follow-up info? Sure. I would just say be you. You don't have to be me and you don't have to be Matt and you don't have to be Pierre. There's only one you. Be you. Be authentically you. And that's enough. So just show up and be you. Um, we will be in the North Hall, booth 19,000. Um, I think it's on the second floor or the top floor of the North. I will be in the booth the entire time. Like I said, I don't leave the booth unless I'm on a panel or something important. Um, just be in the booth. Be first in. Be last out. And follow me on LinkedIn. All right. Bye. Perfect. LinkedIn. Okay. Mr. Pierre. All right. Um, I think last thought, work on a good schedule. You know, some people like there, I can do, you know, the eight to like 6 p.m. every day and after and before hours. Um, but I think find also like 10 minutes here and there to like, you know, be able to have a break, um, maybe get some uh, sunshine outside before going back inside for many hours. Uh, but take that break. You will miss out on some buyers, but also trust your team um, to do well. Uh, goes back to like the preparation uh, before the before the show. Um, for the first time, I won't be exhibiting. Uh, so I'll be walking, which I'm, you know, cannot wait. I don't have to build a booth, break down the booth, you know, and, and be there for many hours. So I'll be kind of taking meetings, you know, here and there, spending time at Francis booths and, you know, having, uh, having just a lot of fun. Um, and then follow Fishwife on, on our site, on our Instagram, TikTok, um, check out the Shark Tank episode from last Friday. Becca did amazing on it. And it's a lot of fun to, to watch. All right. And, more, um, yeah, Matt. One more thing. don't forget to stay hydrated, everybody. <laughs> stay hydrated. You can stop our food. We're giving, we give out full bottles of chlorophyll water. Somewhere so, in between staying hydrated and not having to leave to go to the bathroom too often is where I like to be. <laughs> I, um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I, and, you know, I have a couple of cool announcements for Startup CBG at the show. So as probably most people know, we have a dedicated section. Um, it's ACC Level 3, which is part of Hot Products. If you're looking at the main convention center, you would look up at the top left. That's where our section of 25 booths is going to be. Tons of first-timers for Expo West, really exciting brands. Uh, we have a bunch of good stuff that's going to go on inside the section. We have a full day of one-on-one -on -one buyer meetings for Central Market that will be announced on our Slack where people can apply um, to meet up with their buyer. We also, I am so excited to announce, are realizing one of my dreams, which I hope is the first ever fashion show walk-off for swag. So this is going to be sponsored by swag.com. And so in our dedicated section, the vision is we will have people with their brand swag, with their, you know, fishwife shirt or the Unite Foods hat, um, walk it up and down the aisle. Me and Patricia will be there. You know, oh, who are they wearing? Where's that from? Like hosting. Um, we'll have a cool prize for the winner. So I'm really excited because everybody shows up for the show with looking good with their swag already and prepped. So we're really excited to be able to do a lot of cool video content um, to feature all of that. Um, so we have a lot of that and a lot more. Obviously, we have our Expo West Alley Rally Party, which is the party at Expo West. It is a more than 1,000 person bowling party, also featuring lots of emerging backpack brands, the best of which will win a booth at next year's Expo. Um, and then we have a lot of other stuff going on as well. So just make sure you're signed up for our email newsletter, startupcpg.com. And in the Slack channel, we have an Expo West chat in there also if you want to hear about all of the cool stuff that's going on what do you guys think about the fashion show walk off are you guys going to be there are you going to participate i'm on swag.com right now looking to see what i'm going to participate with yes you're on the swag.com site already cool they've got some good stuff there get ready to see some cool startup cpg swag as well we don't need to be competing we just need to look good as the hosts for it will cool, there be Matt a disco ball and like a runway Say again. I said, well, there's like music and a disco ball smoke runway. That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, we haven't gotten that far in the planning, but yeah, I think that's I think that's what we need. Absolutely. Maybe I need a tuxedo. Yeah, yeah, I just want to I just want to see your blue steel. That's all that I'm. I, <laughs> that's all I care about. Yeah, there will be very serious Zoolander vibes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Guys, thank you so much. This has been another episode of the Startup CPG podcast. Thank you so much to Matt, Clara, and Pierre for joining us. This was years and years of experience, um, tips from all of the 
um, shows at Expo that you guys just got from them. So thank you so much to them for being, I think, just so generous with their knowledge and just being, you know, really interested to share it with everybody. I'm always blown away by how much people just love to help. Um, so in the spirit of all of that, thank you guys so much for joining us and all that you do for the community in general. And uh, thank you everyone for listening and we will see you on the next episode. Bye everyone. Bye see you guys. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast today, it would really help us out if you can leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I am Daniel Scharf. I'm the host and founder of Startup CPG. Please feel free to reach out or add me on LinkedIn. If you're a potential sponsor that would like to appear on the podcast, please email partnerships at startupcpg.com. And reminder to all of you out there, we would love to have you join the community. You can sign up at our website, startupcpg.com, to learn about our webinars, events, and Slack channel. If you enjoyed today's music, you can check out my band. It's the Super Fantastics on Spotify Music. On behalf of the entire Startup CPG team, thank you so much for listening and your support. See you next time.